Okay, we are back after about a whole day uh, of being away from this project, and I will tell you why. So, uh, we did try to test the 5382H coupler. This one is, is one of the two I had. And I tested both of them, and neither of them were working, uh, which I thought was pretty strange. They are literally new, but, you know, that happens. Maybe they were rejects, factory problems. Um, but, you know, a little bit, a little bit odd, a little bit rare to have two units uh, malfunction. So remember that uh, what's interesting about this whole setup is that the cable was not the original cable because those cables are impossible to find. Uh, and so what I, I bought a, some cables off eBay that at least were the right connectors and had all 19 conductors, uh, all 19 conductors uh, in a one-to-one -one pattern flowing through from one end to the other end. I figured, what more could I possibly ask for? Um, and yet, nothing was happening. And what I mean that they weren't working is they were just dead. Uh, no activity, no relays, nothing. So uh, I ended up uh, opening, them, opening one of them up. And I will show you. There, there are several pieces of it. Uh, I've just temporarily reassembled it. Um, but here is here is the inside one. This this board lifts off, and there is another board underneath a metal panel. Um, underneath this, in fact, uh, this metal panel. So this metal panel is at the very bottom of the coupler. Then what you see here uh, is ab above that on some standoffs, and then above all of that uh, is this, which I've taken off temporarily. But this, this goes on and it provides fan and some, some cover. So what you'll see here now is this coupler is in fact connected to this radio, the gray cable. And what I can show, what I did is I used, uh, you, you may or may not know, but you can remote, I'm trying to get a picture here, you can take off, um, Focusing is a little problematic today. Uh, you can take off uh, the the control panel, and and it turns into a key, KDU key, keyboard display unit. And you can use one of these often found on eBay cables. And let me show you what the front of the radio looks like. So here's here's the radio with the KDU on, and all you have to do is just slide this over. Oops, it's already on the wrong. You slide it over and you pull it off. And then what that reveals is this connector here. So if you look at the radio that's actually being tested, uh, I've already removed the KDU and plugged in this cable. It's an interesting little cable. It's kind of like a limo. It's not a limo, but it's reminiscent, you might say, of a limo. Uh, this helps with uh, remote testing <laughs> uh, for sure. So let me show you the problem. Um, if you look inside the coupler, you know, I'm going to try to put some uh, flash on. If you look inside the coupler, there, there's just no activity. There's no, there's, there are LEDs on the, on the board, but no activity. And I was able to trace that there is 28 volts getting to the very bottom part of this unit, but it seems to not be going any further than that, and some uh, three-pin regulators are, are, don't see any input voltage, and therefore they don't see any output voltage. But there is 28 volts getting through through the, uh, through the cable at the right spot. So I was, went to look at the manual before I did anything. Now, I don't really have the full manual for this. In fact, I only have one page of the manual. So, but I first started with the, amp the amplifier. I don't know how this is gonna work with that shadow. Let me try, try some light. So this is uh, the manual to the amplifier. And you can see in the right-hand side here, the R RF, uh, 5033A, 333PA, and the 5833PA troubleshooting. Very similar radios. I also have the manual only for the 5833. But what you see here is, let's see if I can focus, is these are the 19 J9. This is the, the coupler control output of the amp, J9. And you can see A through V minus I is 19. These are all the 19 signals. 
and they all look fine. I mean, there's some, they're, I, they're all, meaning that uh, they all go through. Remember the cable I've tested, it all goes from end to end. And nothing here looks unusual. We have some not used, NC's no connection, some grounds, you know, fairly common stuff. So I was really pulling my hair out. What the hell could the problem be? Maybe this thing is completely faulty. Uh, a friend of mine was able to find a, a page of a very uh, intermediate level manual in in uh, in Espanol uh, of the 5833 itself. And this may be a little harder to see. Again, it's a block diagram, but it does show it does show that if you see here, there is a, a, a function, a block called protection for over voltage, and you can see that the 28 volts. Uh, comes in, and other than that, and some other stuff, it kind of gets, you know, it's this is a, a, a gating function, right? With this, not going to let the power go through all the other regulators and create all the other voltages, it could be a problem. And what we see here is that this is triggered on pin B of the uh, control cable, and, and it's called remote start. That's that's my best interpretation of what this means: remote start, and it's pin B. However, if you go back to the amp, pin B, let's try to get some focus in there. Pin B is not connected. Interesting. Uh, and then you'll also see that this is a, uh, with the slash in front of the encendido, it means pulled load, low is active. So this seems to be requiring a pin B that is remote start, yet the amp has no connection there. So, hmm, got very interesting. So what did we do about it? Okay, so back over to the amp. What I was able to do, if you can see it, I don't know if you can see it or not. Let me see if we can get some more light in here. Not helpful. Uh, I have a little grabber, uh, a little grabber, wire grabber connector connected on. You can kind of see, so here's, here's the connector. Here's the cable, and it goes through. You can kind of see that the, there are pins that connect from the cable into the rest of the circuit board. I was able to get this little uh, grabber, again, no, no good light here, uh, onto that, onto pin B. Okay, and then what I've done is I've got, I've got pin B uh, here, and I can manually ground it. Now, I did some other things with this, with some help from some friends. First, I, I put it through a 470 ohm uh, resistor just to make sure that I was going to blow anything up to reduce the current. And sure enough, this is what happens when you ground it. All right. I hope you heard that. So if I turn my flash off, you will see now we've got some light. Life. Got a LED, LED, LED. You know, lots of LEDs now, like a Christmas tree, this thing's lit up. And so we believe we found the problem. So what we're going to do here, I may have to put my uh, flash back on. I think that helps the visibility. No, it does not help the visibility. Uh, let me turn the light off on this. sure if that helps either. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to turn it back on. So um, we're going to run a, a, a bite test again. Built in, we're going to do it for the, the built-in coupler. And this remote is very convenient, uh, so I can see the results. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so what do you say? Let's give it a try. Ready? I'm hit enter and see what happens. All right. Look at that. Lots of activity. And what do we what do we have here? If you can see that, test passed. Woohoo! That's a great feeling. Great feeling. Now let's do another test. Uh, what we're going to do is. We're going to do a Viswar test. 
Hope that you can see this. Now, um, I, again, I've got nothing attached to the output of this. So uh, it's, you know, it, it, unlike the, 4, 8, uh, the, the 382A, the bigger one, uh, this will not be able to find good matches, and you'll see it'll fold the power back. So let's see what we got. I guess the fun part is, is this. Okay. Uh, that was fast, and the reason is because I already had that frequency in. I'd already done that frequency. But look, a uh, coupler fault, high, uh, PA warning, high vis war. Okay, it's to be expected. Okay. Let's, uh, let's change the frequency to, let's say, uh, let's try 11 megahertz. Very fast. Okay. Power cutback, external coupler, vis war. We got only got nine, power, nine watts out. These are of 1.0. Um, let's do it again. Coupler fault, oval voltage. Okay, these are all acceptable. Remember that these Harris, this Harris equipment is, is really indestructible. Uh, they allow shorts. They allow open circuits from the antenna. Uh, and it all handles it very gracefully. So um, it's not really a big risk of anything being damaged here, which is... One of the reasons I really love military equipment. Uh, let's try uh, 13 megahertz. Again, there's no antenna, so we're not radiating. Let's try 14 megahertz. And let's see if we can get a picture of what's going on here. Okay. Uh, in this case, power cutback, external coupler. Fine, nine watts. But the darn thing's working, and that's what's most important. And uh, so. Next thing is I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to permanently ground this uh, pin B, whether I'm going to do it. I, I won't be able to do it in the cable, I don't think. There's just not going to be enough room in that, in that 219 conductor cable. You can see how thick this thing is, about the size of my finger. And I'm hesitant to do it in the amp, although uh, it's, I've got it sort of open. I think the right place to do it, I'm sorry, I'm hesitant to do it in the coupler, even though it's open. I think the right place to do it is probably in the amp. Uh, since it says no connection in the AMPS documentation, I won't really be affecting anything. So I'm going to try to maybe open the back of this and then uh, ground pin B here, and that should really do it and allow these cables that I, that I bought uh, to work fine. Well, anyway, uh, that's the whole story. Uh, so I'm very pleased to announce that these radio systems work, work well. And I just need to, uh, so I, I, what, I didn't, what I didn't say is that most likely the cable, the original, original Harris cable, the correct Harris cable, probably has two pins connected, interconnected, pin B for this, um, for this remote start and the ground pin. And because this is not a Harris cable, it does not have that unique interconnection and therefore didn't work right. Um, so I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with the results and thanks for joining me.